Hello, I'm Brandon Jury. In this incredible edition of Killing with Cubase, we're going to talk about MIDI basics. We got to get the channel stuff right, and that's probably something I'm, I could, should show you with um, my hardware sense because that's the easiest way I've set up right now. Although we could do it over here as well. Now, if you don't have this going anywhere, like uh, it's just a MIDI track, that's what it sounds like. It doesn't do anything because you have to trigger a noisemaker of some kind, and that's where where all this stuff comes from. And let's just load one up. Let's just do um, oh FM8 is pretty fun. We're not going to create a MIDI track for that. We're just going to say whatever. Okay, hang on. What's this button? Oh, it's all muted. My fault. Okay, so there's that thing. Now let's go ahead and route this contraption to it. Probably won't sound any good for various reasons, but... Uh, okay, sounds awesome. Alright, my fault. Um, and then see, within Cubase, we kind of talked about this before. Push F3 to get to our mixer. Okay, so another one of those always on top things. I hate that feature and I can't figure out how to get it off. That's something I gotta look up. Um, what you'll see here, we have our MIDI track. This guy. And he's going to FM8 here. Shut up, Banzer. Again, every damn video, he's gotta be in it. Uh, damn dog. And then out of this thing, it returns on this channel. If we can see right there. Okay, and that, that sums up the basics of MIDI. Now, I did that with the drum editor, which we saw here with these kind of dots. The only real difference between a drum editor and a regular editor, which you can double click on, is these make little squares. Or rectangles, I guess. Now, we can move... Oh, yeah. We can move that wherever we want. We can create... You know, create chords and... Okay, you get the idea. We can make them longer. And we can do basically anything just with our... By, like, the mouse. And, like, the dead mouse guy, who's, like, you know, one of the tip-top house music dudes, the story goes that he doesn't even own a MIDI uh, controller of any kind, like a keyboard. He just draws everything in. Um, so this is a viable way of expressing yourself, if that's what you want to call it. Um, there's nothing wrong with this method, and uh, it's, it's definitely one way to work. Now, another way to work, I'm going to kill this, and then the usual recording trickeries uh, apply, where... I'm going to turn off or set up the lanes to be a little different. Um, and that's another thing. You can use lanes with MIDI tracks as well. You can pretty much do every Cubase feature within every Cubase feature when it makes sense. Now I'm going to turn around here and beat on this synth thing. Let's make sure I can have the monitoring button so it knows that we want to listen to it. So, all right, so we're going to turn my click on, hit play after I get back a bar. And so... I see I forgot to arm the man. It's one thing to record yourself, which is hard enough. It's another thing to do videos while you're doing it. I'm teaching you how to do it while I do it. Alright, here we here we go. Hit record. Alright, so well shh oh. That's that's because looping was on. Now okay, well, let's talk about that real quick because it's important to know when you have this looping business on Sometimes the first take, Cubase just says, eh, you can do a practice run, and then you do the real one. And that's what happened right there. So I don't, I haven't, sometimes it doesn't always do that. I don't really know what's going on. I didn't make it. Blame the Germans. All right, where are we at here? Impeccable timing there. Okay. So, you can see here, it, the bottom one, it left, um, hmm, I got a problem. That's odd. Anyway, not sure what's going on there. Some little glitch. Cool. Welcome to my world. So much for Cubase. Sucks, huh? Anyway, so. Okay, so you get the idea there. We can enter, enter that data, and I could have just as easily, uh, drawn these little things, you know, um, some of this is a little goofed up because you can't see their velocities. Let me change this around. I do so many real sessions and everything gets beat up, torn up, messed up, you know. So 
might not be a, the best person to show you this. I probably should have started with some kind of blank installation. But again, we can edit how long that, that dude sustains. See, snapping's on, so it's forcing us into a grid or whatever. Uh, snapping off, I just push J. We can go anywhere we want. So that's interesting. We can adjust the velocity. Oh, it's got that thing going on. Let's see. Why is that? Okay, there it goes. Um, so we can adjust how loud things are, real soft. Yeah. Or real loud. Which, which, again, velocity isn't really soft or loud. It's how hard you hit the key, which that doesn't always mean it's louder. It means it has more attack in the beginning sometimes. So that's something to think about, too. It really just depends on the on the sound and whatnot. But anyhow, so the overall idea is you, you can adjust pretty much anything you want um, within the sequencer thing. That's what this is called. This is the sequencer. And you can send it to whatever synth you want. And if you want, you can duplicate it and send it to two synths, and you kind of get in that layered business. Now, one other thing we need to talk about real quick is channels. And uh, this actually applies in contact, although I'm kind of afraid contact and me aren't getting along right now. Um, I don't think it likes my 64-bit system here. Um, contact is one is a sampler, which allows you to say on channel 1, to do drums, channel 2 bass, channel 3 piano, or whatever you want to do. It's got a zillion instruments, and you can add 10 zillion more. Um, the thing of it is, is, in order to keep things straight, this is the channel here. You have to send... So we talked about MIDI, that the drums being on channel one, you would send that to number one. And the bass on two, you'd have to do this to number two, and et cetera, down the list to match up whatever you do in contact. Now, I guess I need a picture of my synths here um, to kind of show what's going on, but I'm gonna go out my uh, MIDI, my hardware MIDI uh, interface. And if I send that to one, that should go to my 8080, which is having problems, which you'll hear. Something weird going on. I'm hearing two things at once. Don't know. All right. So there's synth one, and then we'll hear a totally different sound because we're going to, this is the Korg uh, MS-2000. Okay, and then we go to three. This should be my virus. And there's that bell sound we've used on a million things. I, or you've heard on a million tutorials, and then so here's my profit. Weird, but good. And then uh, last is the Moog uh, Voyager RME I've got. So okay, maybe not the Moog's strongest suit. Moog normally is pretty amazing, but anyway, uh, so you get the idea that you can send this to different synths or different facets of the same synth and the idea here is you can control up to 16 different um i guess i'll call them gadgets it's a, a 16 individual entities uh with one midi cable or in this case one track i guess you could say um and that's for whatever reason they've stuck with the, the 16 channel thing with midi and even though it probably with the computer can do way more and all that but so anyway just make sure you have the channels matched up to whatever instrument you're going with now with fm8 and things of that sort and, and you see with the FM8, it only does one channel because it, it only it's only capable of one sound at a time, as far as I know. Um, now, when you get like with contact and those things or kind of like the old workstation, uh, doing the quotes, workstation concept, which you don't see as much anymore, but like the, the Korg Triton and things of that sort were, uh, or even a full synthesizer where they'd have drums, bass, and they'd basically try to do the whole, whole production in there with a, maybe a sequencer inside. Um, those can often do all 16 um, at the same time. So if, if that's the case, that's when you need to start paying attention to channels much more. Um, okay, I think that covers the basics of MIDI. Um, again, I know you're going to have a lot of questions, and this is just a start, but that'll kind of get you up and running within Cubase. I hope that helps. Thanks, guys.